Okay, so today we are we are going to continue with the question that I uh, I've started on Friday but could not finish. Okay, so just to quickly recap, so this question asks us uh, to calculate the principal stress and maximum shearing stress. I will not do that uh, to make you calculate the principal stress. We just want to construct the element, and I'll explain what do I mean by construct the element. So we started breaking down what is in this example we we, we I, I told you how to look at a table like this okay then we started breaking down our our uh forces okay so we draw them in different views okay and like what i mentioned before the most important thing is do not analyze the dots and cross okay so just to quickly recap this is a cross okay you don't analyze when it's a cross or a dot okay then we, we found what is uh, what is a uh, moment, how to differentiate the difference between a moment and a torque, okay? And we start looking at shearing stresses, okay? So we start uh, constructing shear flow, okay? So that's what we did. So we have broken down everything already. Broken down means we, we, we at the end of uh, last week, okay, we knew what was uh, uh, axle load. We knew what is a uh, moment. We knew what is a torque. Okay, then from there, we started breaking down the forces. So we look at element A first. So, so last week, we look at element A. So where do we mean by element A? So if I zoom in close enough, unfortunately, it's not very clear. This is our, uh, UG. this is our element A. And today, we, we are also going to analyze element B. Okay, element B. So... We already started on element A, okay. Analyze on element A, and we 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 calculated our axle load. Sorry, our normal stress in the z direction. Okay, so these are caused by these forces or moments will cause axle load. So what are they? They are your axle load. They are your what? So these two are your bending moments. Okay. So once we done that, this is what I mean. What you see over here. Is construction of the element. So the term test, I just make you construct the, bleh, bleh, the the stresses on the element, but I will not get you to solve it. To solve it, you have to analyze with Mohs circle, and I'll tell you why why the Mohs circle is critical uh, for later purposes. Okay. Then after that, we found we were going to find right the shearing stresses right in the exact plane. Generated by what? V uh, X. Okay, so generated by V X. That's where we come with the six thousand. Uh, six thousand. And a thing very critical about analyzing the shear stress. Okay, does not mean right. Does not does not mean that it is it is close to is close to the bottom, right? It is zero stress. Okay, I mean close to the ends is zero stress. Because most of these problems are associated with thin wall analysis. Yeah, again, so for thin wall analysis, it's all dependent on the on 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 the on the direction of your shear flow. So be very very careful, okay? Because I taught you guys while analyzing, okay, while analyzing, right? We can determine whether it, we can guess, okay? We can guess whether you're going to have zero shear flow. Or shear stress or maximum. Okay, so we cannot rely on this diagram over here. So this diagram state that away from the away from the centroid, right, or away from the 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 yeah from from the uh, centroid, the stresses are zero. At the middle, it is maximum. We can't rely on that anymore because the shear flow analysis in tin wall is not the same. Okay, so we we done this maybe like two weeks ago, right? Based on shear flow, your 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 as long as you have a Q. And it's not at the end. You are always going to get a. You are always going to get a shear stress. Okay. So it's that's what thin wall analysis. So we started on our shearing stress. Okay. And it was caused by Vx. Okay. So we analyze our shearing stress Vx. And I'll pick up from here. Um, a critical thing is you have to look at the what, the direction of the shear flow. So the direction of shear flow for this side is going this way right so this is the direction the shear flow is going and we found the shear stress is 6.47 times 10 to power 6 okay so to carry on there is another uh 
there is another uh, shear flow or, sh uh, or, or, or yeah, shear force in the y direction. Okay, we, we have another. So now we start again. Okay, I'm going to continue on the problem. So we have we have the we are going to find yeah, we're going to find the uh, shearing stress induced by okay induced by vy okay so i'm going to i'm i'm going to copy the diagram Okay, so this is the diagram that we look at. So now it's due to what? It's due to Vy. Okay, so Vy is in this direction. Okay, Vy, right? So the Vy is equal to 25 times 10 to power 3 Newton. The previous one we have done is we are looking at what? Vx. Okay, now we're going to look at Vy. So we know the stresses that we're going to calculate, right? So the, the stresses that we are going to calculate is uh, we're going to do a thin wall analysis. Now, in your term test, I will tell you what section to use thin wall, what section to use thick wall. Okay, I don't want you to be confused. Okay, I don't want you to, oh, you, we do not know we use. Uh, thick wall. Okay, I will, I, will, I will make sure that what section has to use thick wall, what section have to use thin wall. Okay, I will, I will remind you. Okay, so the 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 analysis is thin wall. Okay, thin wall analysis. Uh, white flange configuration. Okay, we're going to and then because it is white flange. We're going to use Q, just Q only. Okay. So again, we locate where our elements are. Okay. So this case, so we are just going to focus on element A for this case, right? Later on, I'll do element element B. So this is our element A, and we we are also aware of the distance. Okay. So the distance from there to here, if I were to check, it is. Uh, 75 millimeters. So for this case, we know it's white flange. The way the shear flow will flow, the shear flow will flow this way. Okay, so I'm constructing the shear flow. So that's why by constructing the shear flow, you know you are using Q or 2Q. Okay, then we go out here. So the area of interest is at element A. So this is the area that we are going to calculate. Okay, that is the area that we are going to consider. Uh, that, sorry, there's a first moment of area that we are going to consider. Okay, so if we apply uh, or if we look at the formula, so the shear that we're finding is xz, and the shear is xz is equal to shear of zx, and this will be equal to uh, vy over ixx, right, and qx divided by the thickness. So for this case, we know that the thickness, okay, the thickness, right, is equal to what is the thickness? So the thickness will be equal. So by looking at the table, okay, so last week we refer to a table. I hope I have the table here or I did not. Yeah, so we look at the table here. So T, so the thickness over here, which is equal to your D. So that this is the, uh, uh, this is the, uh, selected uh, white flange uh, configuration that we're going to use. So the T F at the flange, the thickness of the flange, as you can see down here, right, is 11.8. Okay. So from here we come to here. So we know that anything, any, everything that we analyze down here is 11.8 times 10 to power minus 3 meter cube. The I X X. Okay. So watch last week's video, okay, uh, regarding how to configure your beam relative to the table. Okay, that's important. So 
IXX is 40.8 times 10 to minus 6. So down here is 40.8 times 10 to power minus 6 meter cube. And our VY, right, we know that this is equal to 25 times 10 to power 3 Newton. Okay. Right. So from here, again, uh, the, the, the thing about uh, shear stress is always the first moment of area. Okay. Once you get the first moment of area right, you're good. You got, you got your first moment of area wrong, that's where trouble will occur. So QX, right, is equal to the area multiplied by uh, Y bar. Okay. Because we have to find this distance over here. So this distance is our Y bar. Okay. So if we look at the area, I usually like to do V first. So 75 times 10 to the power minus 3. Okay, 75. So the, the, the depth is equal to 11.8 times 10 to the power minus 3. And this distance from here to here, right? So we, we know that the distance over here, this is your 11.8 times 10 to the power minus 3 divided by 2. And then the entire distance up to the centroid. Okay, so if, if you look at the, the table, you want to find D. So D is equal to 205. You can see it. So 205. Okay, so, so this whole thing is 205 times 10 to the power minus 3 divided by 2. Right? So from here, you will have uh, 205 times 10 to the power minus 3 divided by 2, right? Then minus by 11.8 times 10 to the power minus 3 divided by 2, okay? So ultimately... Uh, Eugene? Yes? Should your thickness be meters cubed? You also put meters cubed for IXX. Oh, yeah. Where are you? Who are you? Okay, I owe you beer and I've not given you money. I'm sorry. Okay, it's really been hectic this week. Okay, I do pay my bills. Okay, so don't worry. Okay, <laughs> two zero five five minus three divided by two minus by a beer too. Huh? He, he pointed out the T. Evan. What? Hello. Uh, yes. Evan gets the beer. Send the beer too. to me, please. Oh, Evan also. Their units are <laughs> Evans you cheeky sort. Send by power of minus three times by eleven point eight power of minus three times by this. So it's equal to eighty five point four nine one. Yeah, what am I doing today? So eighty five point four nine one times ten to power six meter cube. Okay. Then once you get this, it's real easy to get the right number now, right? So your shear xy or xz, right, is equal to 25 times 10 to power 3. Your q is uh, 85.491 times 10 to power minus 6. Your i is 40.8 times 10 to power minus 6. And then your thickness is 11.8 times 10 to the power minus 3. You don't need to divide by 2 again because this is a what? Under a white French configuration. Okay, so 25 power 3 times by 85.491 power minus 6 divided by 40.8 minus 6 divided by 11.8 power of minus 3. So this will be equal to 4.439. times 10 to power 6 Pascal. Okay, so we have this. All right, so once we have, once we got that, okay, now it's important to state your direction, okay, your direction is going this way, okay. Now, so now we are going to put the shear together now. Okay, so we're going to construct the element. This is a question. Yes. Yeah. Um, if the shear force is in the y direction, then why is the stress xz, like why isn't y in there somewhere? So, so your question, so I'm going to draw. Because it's VY, right? 
Wait, let, let me construct what we're looking at. So, so we are looking at a, uh, at, at, I should not construct this way. 